Okay, today I'm going to talk about how Wikimedia projects can assist in language learning. This is a contribution to OpenCon Ohio 2024, which is being held in the week of uh, May 17. You can find these slides on Zenodo under this uh, DOI. All the images in the presentation are linked so that you can engage further uh, with the examples that are included here. <coughs> First, uh, the structure of the talk, I'll introduce the Wikimedia projects, then uh, I'll give a very brief overview um, by showing you examples from uh, each of these different websites. And then uh, I'll look at different ways to engage with the languages uh, through those websites. Um, the ecosystem is um, basically structured by uh, different um, projects, like Wikipedia is one of them. And many of them exist in multiple languages, so that all together um, they actually uh, form about uh, a thousand uh, different wikis. Um, yeah, so these different uh, projects are Wikipedia, Wiktionary, and so on, roughly sorted by um, information channel. You can find them all together under the wikimedia.org domain, and uh, you can click your way through. Uh, from there, select the project and then the language, and uh, then you can navigate that system. Um, each of these communities has, as, or each of these wikis essentially has its own uh, community that collaborates, that uh, governs itself, uh, but they share some common characteristics. So the entire content is free um, to use for anyone and also to reuse and repurpose. So it's openly licensed. It's um, created in a correct uh, in a collaborative fashion. It is all served using open source software and the data about it is all open so that uh, anyone can use and reuse it. And you're also welcome to contribute to it, but today I'm going to focus on how this ecosystem interacts with uh, the learning and teaching of languages. So uh, <clears throat> first, uh, a brief, um, let's say, navigation across the ecosystem. I'll briefly name all of them <clears throat> by their logo here in this um, picture. <clears throat> so the first one most um, known probably is Wikipedia. Already there you have uh, the uh, depiction of multilinguality in the logo. Um, and yeah, Wikipedia exists in 300 languages. Wikimedia Commons is the media repository for this entire ecosystem. And it is uh, one uh, website in which you can essentially use any language, whereas Wikipedia has separate websites for separate languages. <clears throat> Here is Wikisource, which collects archival material in various languages. There's Wikinews uh, for news, Wiktionary as a dictionary, Wikiversity for uh, teaching materials and uh, learning materials, Wikivoyage uh, is a travel guide, Wikidata is uh, basically the database that anyone can edit. And then we have uh, the incubator, which is for things that don't fit into the ecosystem yet. And there's uh, the media wiki software uh, that all of these uh, wikis run on. There's wiki species for species. There's wiki quote for, for quotes. The meta wiki that uh, con is for things that concern more than one of these wikis. There's wiki books for books, wiki functions for uh, mathematical and computer functions. Wikimania is the annual meeting of uh, this uh, global community and in the center is the Wikimedia Foundation, which essentially owns the trademarks and runs the, the servers. But around all these projects and the Wikimedia Foundation, there is a whole range of other um, community organizations. Um, so for instance, there are local chapters in many countries. And there are thematic uh, chapters like Wikimedia Medicine. <clears throat> and there are all sorts of user groups uh, that deal with um, different aspects of this ecosystem. And now we're going to go through this uh, circle here um, in a clockwise fashion, um, starting with Wikimania, and just briefly show that there is multilingual content. So for instance, attendees of uh, the event are greeted and informed about the uh, event or about similar events in multiple languages. Uh, on wiki functions, you have functions that, uh, for instance, uh, take an input and then uh, perform 
essentially linguistic um, operations on them. So here you have the Rohingya Fona noun, and you can get uh, an ergative case um, using this function. Then uh, Wikibooks has uh, lots of long-term uh, material or long, deep, deep study material, but it also provides introductory materials like um, a simple introduction to uh, words um, with, um, the, like in this case, the letter B uh, as part of a mechanism to introduce uh, people to the English alphabet. This is the Bengali Wikibook. And you can see a word uh, and you can listen to a word that actually starts with this letter. Meta uh, here to, is used to coordinate. So for instance, uh, around uh, the COVID pandemic, there were lots of things to coordinate content wise here and also organizationally. And so you have the landing page for this uh, coordination, um, for these co coordination activities, again, in multiple languages. Wiki quote here, uh, Ukrainian wiki quote on uh, multilingualism or bilingualism to be precise and a Hebrew wiki quote uh, on COVID-19. Uh, on wiki species, uh, one linguistic aspect is uh, the etymology of the names of the species. So here you, uh, for instance, have uh, some information about that. Then uh, the media wiki software that all of these websites run on is being built by a global community of developers. They also have events like the Wikimedia Hackathon uh, very recently. And again, there you have uh, wel the welcome pages in multiple languages. Uh, then the incubator is for things that don't fit in uh, yet. So, uh, but it can already uh, serve to collect and organize uh, the content. So once a particular setup, uh, a page is, no, once a particular new project is set up, let's say a Wikipedia in a new language, then uh, this can immediately start with some content and this content can be prepared in the incubator. And uh, that allows uh, to con constantly um, expand the linguistic coverage. Wikidata is the database that anyone can edit. You can essentially contribute uh, in any language of your choice and you can then pull the information uh, out in uh, other languages or, or, or of course also in the language in which you've contributed. And since it's a database, you can also query it in a structured way. So you can uh, use certain query languages like Sparkle, uh, but you can combine that with essentially any language uh, that the system knows. And uh, so here is a Hindi query for uh, getting a list of clinical trials. Um, Wiki Voyage, um, yeah, traveling is often associated with uh, languages. So here you get uh, travel information in multiple languages. Uh, the examples are both again from COVID-19. Um, this one is in Esperanto and this one in Turkish. Wikiversity, here you have the Greek university talking about uh, alphabets used in North and South Korea. Um, a dictionary with entries in Quechua and German. There's Wiki News entries. Uh, again, the examples are mostly taken from COVID-19. Uh, but there is content on all sorts of other things as well. You have, you have Don Quixote, uh, you have uh, natural history field notes, you have a poem. Uh, the poem actually comes with uh, example, audio examples by different people like you. They have read the poem, they've recorded themselves reading it. And so while you're learning the language or maybe even learning that particular poem, you can get an idea uh, of uh, how this would be pronounced by native speakers. Wikimedia Commons, the media repository for the entire ecosystem, has materials in multiple languages. So yeah, again, COVID-19 is the theme here, um, but also an animation of how you can uh, display characters uh, of a given alphabet uh, using certain digital technologies or some pre-digital technologies like, uh, yeah, palm scripts in, in Balinese. Um, Wikipedia, of course, exists in multiple languages and uh, it also exists on, on mobile. And uh, yeah, you, you can engage with that and also knows about different computer languages and you can have uh, content about languages and other topics. Um, there is also uh, a range of initiatives that actually help 
with the translation coordination between language contents so when the, and the Ebola outbreak was there uh, and the community coordinated to provide the information about uh, the disease and also cures and, and so related information in the languages of the people affected and uh, also Wikipedia has information about uh, linguistic aspects so here you have Esperanto Wikipedia on multilingualism and then Besides all these uh, Wikimedia projects themselves, there are lots of additional channels that the community can and does use to engage with languages. So for instance, we have a Wikimedia Language Diversity Hub. You have uh, user groups in many languages uh, and, and they have their own uh, landing pages in the ecosystem. There are um, community organizations like Wikitongues and so on. And uh, they also have their own events and uh, yet other um, information channels. Um, besides that, uh, on most wikis you have mechanisms to uh, use um, the wiki itself to find people and, um, with certain linguistic uh, criteria. So for instance here we are on the Indonesian Wikipedia, you can find people with certain abilities of French. Um, then we have tools to browse linguistic information. So this is a, a tool that uh, can go essentially into Wikidata and pull out language related information. It has information here, you see about more than 1000 languages. And um, it has then information about individual words from those languages. So if you want to know how to pronounce uh, the, the word Eichhörnchen in German, you can go there and you can get some idea or how it relates to other words, both in German and other languages. Um, yeah, this tool helps you with that. Another tool here um, allows to record the pronunciation of words in any given language. And then you can basically, once you've recorded it, you can upload it to Wikimedia Commons so that uh, your recording then immediately becomes available uh, to the entire ecosystem and with that to the entire world so that the world then knows how that particular uh, word in your language uh, is being pronounced. Um, when you learn a language or teach it, uh, you want to engage in certain ways. So for instance, you want to read uh, to extend your vocabulary, you want to listen, you want to, uh, to basically improve on your pronunciation. Uh, you might want to watch uh, things or you want to search or query. Uh, all of these things you can do on the platform and uh, you can do them uh, in, a, in an exploratory fashion. That is, you don't, you're not expected to contribute. But I personally think uh, the um, linguistic benefits are highest if you actually try to contribute. And this can be very simple. You can just try to check the content that's already there. And then you can try to improve it, of course, uh, which is a very active involvement of uh, your linguistic knowledge and can be combined with... Uh, or other kinds of knowledge that you might have. You can write, you can speak, you can categorize, you can fix mistakes, you can add references, you can add illustrations or maybe translate illustrations, you can add captions, data, or you can even suggest uh, updates, rearrangements, you can engage in discussion, each of these wiki pages as a discussion page, and so on. Some of the tools that exist, uh, there is tooling that helps you identify and fix typos or mark them as non non-typos. Um, you can categorize images by the kinds of typos or languages in which the typo exists. Uh, you can categorize uh, images uh, by the languages uh, that uh, are uh, visible or that are used in the uh, media. Um, you can help associate um, meaning with certain strings. So here um, a tool that um, provides you with a mechanism to say whether this uh, Finnish noun is appropriately described by this uh, phrase. Um, there are community initiatives like the Lexeme Challenge where uh, you're asked to contribute uh, knowledge to a particular theme, here in this case vegetables. And when the challenge started, uh, with 25 languages covered and while it's still not finished, we have 46 uh, languages covered now, including Akkadian cuneiform script. Um, lots of things have names and uh, you can engage with those as well. And in the ecosystem, we have all sorts of different names for people, places, songs, and whatever, buildings. 
And some of those names, they come in lots of different varieties. You can engage with them and try to find out whether they actually belong to the same entity or not. Or vice versa, you have lots of things that actually share the same name, but are actually uh, different entities. And you can then help uh, sort this out. And uh, a final example here is the motto of Wikipedia itself is available in multiple languages and uh, it is available to, to humans and to machines. And you, so you can query this here. And the slides are on the nodo. And with that, I'm looking forward to the discussion. Thank you very much.